Hi guys, it's R.C. Murphy here. Um, this week I'm doing something a little different. I'm actually recording this the week before because I don't know when I'm going to have time in my schedule to record next week. So, last night I made the mistake of watching Underworld Awakening and it spawned this whole thought process thingy and I actually had to stop and take notes about how bad this movie was in order to be able to sleep last night. So, uh, here we go. And if I sound like I'm reading, it's because I am indeed reading. Um, <clears throat> I'm guilty of one thing, and I'm sorry, I'm going to cough and sniffle and stuff. My allergies are killing me. So, I'm guilty of one viewing sin when it comes to television or movies or even YouTube videos. I'm eternally loyal to actors after finding them in something I love and hunt them down in anything they've been in, no matter how awful or low budget it is. Likewise, I tend to follow movie series long after they've jumped the shark, made sweet, passionate love to it, and had shark babies. The babies are awful, and they rely on the returning fans to make sales instead of, you know, actually writing a good story. It kind of sucks for those of us who are indeed geeks through and through and really loyal to certain series. Um, could you imagine if Harry Potter had, like, decided that Harry was going to die and Voldemort lived? It's, it's unbelievable how, you know producers and studios really don't take into account what the fans truly want. Um, Alright, so Underworld Awakening. I love all things vampires. It was only, you know, a matter of time before I realized, you know, I really wanted to see the Underworld movies. And I, you know, for the most part, love them, even though some of the parts are really cheesy. But Underworld Awakening was just bad. I couldn't even get into, you know, Kate Beckinsale running around in skin-tight clothes because, you know, she's been wearing the same skin-tight clothes for the entire freaking three movies she's been in. So, you know, it's, yeah. Um, it, Underworld Awakening was just lazy storytelling. They, you know, have this huge plot device of the humans discovering that the supernatural creatures, werewolves, and vampires exist. They don't explain how, and the humans just start killing them willy-nilly, and they are awfully efficient at it for as vicious as some of these creatures are. I mean, we've watched Selene kill 20, you know, unshifted lichens in 10 seconds, yet, you know, the rest of her kind can't kill off a few humans who were taking pop shots at him. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, on top of it, they pull Selena out of the whole scenario by putting her in this cheesy coma-esque story so they can, you know, pop up when she wakes up and go, oh, by the way, you were pregnant when we froze you and you have a kid. Ta-da! <sighs> I'm so tired of coma stories, guys. Really, it's there's no reason for it. You know, you can find another way other than taking the main character completely out of the equation in order for them to be surprised by something. Uh, oh, I have a huge, huge pet peeve with movies and stuff, especially big budget movies, because you know. They have the time and the means to do this. Give your freaking characters names. I spent, you know, half an hour of the movie trying to figure out one dude's name, only to hear it by some off chance, and I'm not even sure that they actually introduced him at all, or if she just somehow knew his name. Uh, I don't even remember the character's name right now. It was that bad, and they only said it, like, twice. And there were other characters done by name actors, huge name actors, who, you know, you have no clue who the character's name is. And if you go to try to look them up on IMDb or something, you're just going to have to look for, you know, vampire number 54 or something like that. Or hope that you already know the actor's name so you can look up the character's name. I should not have to do research in order to know who is what in a movie, guys. Come on. Writing 101, name your goddamn characters. Um, okay, the, 
oh, with the exception of um, the last movie, the prequel movie with the werewolves and shit, we get it. The werewolves are douchebags. They've been treated poorly, and they have this huge beef against the vampires. Whatever. Fucking get over it. I'm so tired of them digging up this trope for the series over and over and over again. I was honestly hoping that it was just humans behind this whole cleansing of the vampires and werewolves thing. Nope. It was the werewolves being assholes as usual. That is not interesting anymore. It is so freaking predictable. And once I realized that there were werewolves involved, ta-da, I knew the entire plot. That it, It's a waste of, you know, 45 minutes of film for me to figure out that the werewolves are behind everything. It, it's ridiculous. Um, oh, and, you know... A series like this, you know, usually has a good return on stuff. Crap, the phone's ringing. Hold on. Um, I forgot where I was because the phone was ringing. So, um, oh, cliffhangers. So, you know, movies like this usually have a pretty good fan return, but the fans only come back if the stories are compelling. So, I don't know why on Underworld Awakening they decided to lay their hat with this huge cliffhanger ending, knowing that there is a good chance they're not going to get the funding to do this movie again. The only explanation I can think of is they've already signed contracts to do a follow-up to Underworld Awakening, which, oh my god, it better be better than this movie was because I'm just about done with the series. And like I said earlier, I am loyal to movie series. You know, I will, I have watched the worst of the Freddy Krueger movies. You know, it, if, as long as, you know, there are characters and stuff that I love, I will continue returning to watch it, especially with, you know, actors like Kate Beckinsale, who are gorgeous and usually pretty good at what they do. Um, but, you know, if they're relying on just sales to get them through this, then they're fucked. Sorry about the language. I curse a lot. I've been really good about not cursing on the podcast so far. So, yeah. Um, oh, another example of my uh, faithfulness landing me in bad viewing was a cult on CW. It's a new show. It's only had two episodes air so far, I think. And um, it's been doing so poorly that they moved it from a prime Tuesday night spot to Friday nights, which is like the death sentence because no one's home to watch movie on or watch television on Friday nights. So th yeah, they're basically just kind of trying to kick this one under the carpet, which sucks. Because the CW has brought back a ton of actors who I absolutely love and they've only had, you know, either bit parts or just short runs on a lot of TV shows I love. Um, I'll admit it now, I'm a huge Vampire Diaries junkie. So when I heard the guy who played Alaric, uh, Matthew Davis, was getting his own show, I was really excited to see what he could do on his own. Um... Uh, there was also uh, all the promos and stuff featured Robert Nepper. I can I don't think I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever. From Heroes, he was the the final big bad guy sort of thing. Uh, and on top of that, they were bringing in Alona Tall again. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right from Supernatural, uh, whose character was killed off far too early. I wanted to see what's going to happen between her and the boys, but whatever. Uh, the cast was just, you know, awesome, and the premise was uh, okay. I, I wanted to see what they were going to do with this, because, you know, I have seen a lot of weirdness in humans, especially when it comes to television shows. It's kind of one of the hazards of um, knowing as much as I do about, you know, fans and conventions and stuff like that, and uh, most of the stuff I can't actually say out loud, but it's, you know... It's been a learning experience the last two years as far as, you know, how fans treat television shows and the actors who play the characters they love. They get kind of obsessive. So that's when Colt said that that was the kind of premise they were taking. I was like, okay. But then I actually started watching and enter the plots. What plots? Um, 
I have no clue what's going on. There's a television show inside a television show and they're connected somehow, but not connected. And right now, you know, two episodes in, I shouldn't be still having this gigantic question mark over my head. There's are supposed to be mysteries. It's kind of what this is. It's kind of a sort of paranormal mystery show. Not quite. Um, but the questions over my head are just too big to make it worth watching the show anymore. I'm going to keep trying to go with this one. Um, my main problem is, is it's trying way too hard to be creepy. It's to the point where it's just, you know, bad cliche after bad cliche of just stereotypical creepy people. And socio, or they're trying to be sociopaths, but they're not quite getting it across correctly. So they're just kind of run of the mill creepy people. And you're like, okay, can I go back to, you know, something interesting? Some plot point, solve one of the mysteries in this episode. Nope, not going to solve anything in this episode. Okay. Um, they also have like weird logic jumps where you're, Watching what they're watching, as as far as you know, Alar or not Alar, Matthew Davis's character will be watching something from the show within the show, and he figures something out, and you're watching the same thing with just about as much information as he has, and can't figure it out. I'm not an idiot. I'm you know, I've been writing forever and watching television for even longer, and you know, I like to think that I can pretty much predict where some plots are going unless it's an amazing completely amazing writer behind the helm like uh sons of anarchy and kurt satter he completely astonishes me almost every time i tune in to watch an episode but for cult it's just yeah there's no straight line to follow and even as loopy as things like Doctor Who are, there's still a, a a logic line that you can follow. Um, and on top of that, they just, Colt brings in random characters who have, you know, apparently intense backgrounds with some of the main characters, and you're like, we haven't heard about you before. Not even an inkling that this person knew Matthew Davis's character seems very isolated, and yet, you know, they've pulled a couple old friends out of the, the cupboard, and the interactions between them are awkward, and they don't feel like friends at all, as a matter of fact. They don't even feel like they could have been maybe more friends, which is what I think they're alluding to to one particular female character. Um, no, I can't remember her name right now. But uh, it's just, you know, tension is good. Forced tension is bad, and I have a feeling that, and these are not bad actors, I just have a feeling that with the way the scripts are written, they're not being given enough to work with, which really sucks because I genuinely love, the, especially the three actors that I mentioned, and they're not, their show's going to end up being canceled. It's not going to get picked up again unless they pull, you know, a magical rabbit out of the fucking hat and make this work. Uh, what else did I have to say? Oh, um, now, don't get me wrong, I do like to watch bad movies for the sake of watching bad movies. However, the movies I watch make no bones about their awful awfulness. They embrace it, kind of like the trauma films. Um, I guess I just, you know, expect more from films and shows with budgets and, and really good good, strong cast. I mean, for fuck's sake, when Charles Dance, who plays Tywin Lannister in Game of Thrones now, play portrays a vampire, I want to see him own the goddamn screen. But, you know, the script he was given and the role he was given didn't do him or any of the others justice. He just kind of muled and talked, you know, not even like a vampire should talk, just kind of bad. I can't even describe it. I'm so frustrated with how poorly they treated some of the actors in Underworld Awakening. Um, for fuck's sake, come on, Hollywood. Uh, are your writers asleep? Or are the studios so desperate they're, they'll they keep milking dried up udders until the fucking things crumble in their money-grabbing hands? I mean, you just 
you can't treat fans like this and expect for them to keep returning over and over and over again to a franchise. We're not dogs, you know. Some dogs, you know, you can abuse and abuse and they'll just keep loving you because they don't know what else to do. Dogs are loyal. Fans are not. They will turn on you in an instant. So, I really hope that especially the Underworld series can kind of salvage something because I thought they should have been done when they went back and did the prequel with the werewolves. That's my honest opinion. I know that they kind of left Celine and what's his name up in the air during the second film, but th there was really, I don't know. I can't even, I'm trying to think of, you know, a good plot on the spur of the moment for a huge movie franchise. Look at me trying to be a goddamn writer. Um, but yeah, uh, that's about all I have this week. I don't have any questions from Twitter or anything because I didn't have time to ask. I was doing this kind of spur of the moment recording. I thought I was going to record this in another day or two, but while I had quiet time except for the phone call that interrupted me, uh, I thought I'd get this done. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I will see you guys around. Have a good week.